People say, do you have a favorite? Do you like comedy or drama? And I say, I like work. When I entered entertainment, I never entered it thinking I want to be funny. I didn't know that funny was, was anything because I got punished for it. You know, I got put on punishment for cracking jokes in class. I didn't know that funny was a way to make a living. I always wanted to be a serious actress, but when I embraced the fact that I'm just naturally funny, I was born that way, I started to work. But people always, you know, want to leave you where they meet you. So they were like, oh no, I've seen you before. You, you're the funny girl. So when I said I really want to do other things, I kind of got trapped because no one in my industry saw me the way I saw myself. So I had to have a meeting with my team to reintroduce myself and invite them to see me like I see myself so that we could all stay on the ride together. And then that's when I got the audition for Getting On. And that job changed my life. I would have still been working my entire career being a funny girl, but now I'm all the girls. That job let the industry know that they could trust me with whatever the work is. Hello, this is Glenda Cleveland. Can you send an officer to the Oxford apartment? Somebody is either being hurt or killed. What do you want me to do, Miss Cleveland? Your job. Can I listen to your heartbeat? Ryan Murphy called me and said, hey, I've got this thing I want you to do. And I said, okay, yes, I'll do it. Then I looked at the scripts and was like, oh my God. Ryan Murphy and Ava DuVernay are the people who will always have me at hello. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So I said yes before I knew what it was. Cause I'm like, oh, the last time he called me, he wanted me to be on Scream Queens. I had so much fun doing that role. Like, yes, I'll do it. You know, when I read it, I'm like, oh boy, put your big girl pants on. Because anytime you play real people, there is such a weight and a responsibility to get it right. The same when Ava, you know, cast me and when they see us, the story about the Central Park Pride, you know, the same when I was in Selma, you know, playing Richie Jean. These are all real people. You have to consider them, their family, their, you know, uh, their essence, the way they took up space, you know, you. so it's a lot involved in that part. But I said yes quick, so I didn't have a choice. I was the one who called the police about your son. I live in the building. I am, I am so sorry. I knew something was wrong. And I never should have trusted the police when they said everything was okay. I knew that walking in to that baby's funeral, the mother is over there wailing, you know, and to look at that father and say, I try. It breaks my heart every time I think about it. It could have been prevented. You know what I mean? If, if they had listened, if there wasn't institutionalized racism at it, homophobia and, and you know, black and brown people being over police, but underserved and, and white privilege. And if it were not for so many of those things, and so to look that father in the face and say, I tried, it, I, that was heartbreaking. He came out of his apartment, he was talking crazy, he's butt naked and he doesn't know what's going on. What's your name, sir? Jeff Dahmer. Son, you know this guy? I mean, look, he's bleeding. He's drunk. He fell over. He's got blood dripping hey, down hey, his hey. head. It's enough. Let us do our job. Okay, okay. But the boy is bleeding. Y'all gonna do something? I told you, he fell over. Okay, he gets real drunk like this. There was my daughter and my niece in the scene, Glenda's daughter, Glenda's niece. But for Niecy Nash Betts, the daughter was my daughter. That's my real daughter. 
I would have wanted somebody to do the same thing if they saw my baby in distress and question the police and say, wait, 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 you just about to walk this child back in here. That was like one of those days where you just feel gutted and you have your real life daughter on set with you. And out of nowhere, she's like, hey, mom, want to do a TikTok? And you like, God, yes. <laughs> I want to do it more than anything in the world right now. I learned the choreography to Cardi B's song Up while I was on set. Are you going to sit down or are you just going to stand there? Like what? You're scared of me. I am not scared of you. Well, come on, sit down then. Jeez, they got you something. I'll sit down with you, but it ain't gonna change nothing. You getting evicted, and it ain't my problem. The scene where Evan and I finally come face to face, when I let him into my apartment and finally look him in his eyes, I knew that was going to cost me something. We had not really had any time on camera that was that extended or that intense. And because Evan is an actor who stays in his process, we didn't really connect on set because he needed to stay intimidated. He needed to stay menacing, you know, in his own way. So it wasn't like we were like, hey, what you do last weekend? There was none of that. So now we have this scene on this day. Although I was very protective of it. And I wanted to make sure he knew that I was praying for him. And I wanted to make sure that he knew, you know, that I was covering him as best I could. You know, because he had a lot on him. I think we walked through it once in rehearsal. And Evan and I got to work. I needed to let the audience know that I was deathly afraid, but I needed Evan's character, Jeff Dahmer, to think I was as cool as a fan. So there was a duality in that scene that I'm not gonna tell you is easy to play for me. And I'm like, how do I bake in the elements that let the audience know, please be afraid for me because I'm afraid for me, but let Jeff Dahmer, no. Try it if you want to, because you got the right one on the wrong day. It was a balancing act, and I wanted to be very present to walk in the truth of it because I needed people to see themselves in the moment. Because we always do that. If I was the neighbor, if I was the girlfriend, you, you know what I mean? So you want to give people the uh, duality of the emotions that you're experiencing in the moment, which is the reason why as soon as he walks away, Glenda goes, it's almost like she was holding her breath the entire time. And it was like, I faced my biggest fear. I looked the devil in the eye and I live to tell the story. Watching Evan up close is a gift. It is like, you know, becoming the thing. I never worked with him before, so I didn't know his process. So I didn't know that we couldn't chit chat and you know what I mean? And pal around in between takes or, you know, whenever I saw him, you know what I mean? I was like, I thought he was mean. And I was like, I'm a nice lady. I know you're not gonna be mean to me. You know, but and then I realized I'm like, oh, this baby is in his process. And he's like, I can't do what I need to do in front of that camera and love you in this room. But now he's obsessed with me. We've wrapped. I read the interview. How you try to save that Laotian boy? It ain't right, Reverend. And you know, the police still ain't called to talk to me. I'm aware. It's inexcusable. Here I am being pestered by reporters from France. Paris, France, and the cops right here in Milwaukee ain't interested in what I got to say. It's like, it's like our people don't count. No, no, no matter what we do or how loud we shout, they, they never listen. What I got from it was really giving vent to her voice for people to finally 
be able to see her experience, to see her pain, to see what it cost her to be pushed back and to be silenced and stepped on. My only regret is that she's not alive to see it. I just tried so hard, you know, to, to put my heart and my soul into it primarily for her. You know, I appreciated that Ryan trusted me, but I did not want another day to go by that that woman was not fully seen.